So, I'm sitting here on a joyful bank holiday Monday afternoon, thinking to myself, what to actually do? And I've been asked for a long time to make a video which is about uh, using MATLAB to simulate our mechanical systems, but using a microcontroller as the input signal. So, in essence, doing a di digital twin which is driven by the same control system between the two. And um, it's not really part of anything that I teach or anything that I'm doing. Uh, um, uh, in the classroom but I did promise a lot of people that I would go through my particular way of doing it now I know a million and one will kind of go yeah you know we know our way this is how we do it you kind of go okay cool I am not here to teach anybody to suck eggs but at the same time I just wanted to take everybody through my method of doing it now um, I am jumping ahead extremely fast here because there's a, a, an awful lot to actually do on this I kind of thought to myself, yeah, this will be fun. And then I've just gone through and reminded myself how much is in this. So it's carrying a light. Okay, let's just go steady away. So what I'll do first is, is I'm going to focus on my mechanical build. This is a 25, actually a 25 kilo servo. Um, the servo that I'm actually using on my desk, which uh, let me see if I can actually point this out. It's this one is a small 25 gram servo. But what I thought might be quite nice is to be able to use my Arduino, which is plugged in down here, and actually have the two overlapping. But what I wanted to do is to take anybody who's interested in doing anything like this through the process of being able to do it. So as we all well know, um, we have the servo, and let me spin it around, and this is the horn. This is one that I downloaded from the company themselves who produced this servo. Uh, it's a cracking really good piece of kit and gearbox is a titanium gearbox anyway let's not uh, to head too much on a tangent to what I wanted to do on this video so uh, I'm just going to open up the actual assembly so this is the key assembly that we're going to work with um, well I'm going to work with <laughs> so first things first I'm just going to open up the horn and I'm going to use this geometry to set up my uh, demo and all it's going to be in this case is um, this is uh, going to be a 180 degree servo we're going to go backwards forwards 180 degrees and then we might have a bit of fun put some weight onto it something like that so what I'll do first is I'm going to export this first piece of geometry as a step file and I've had a lot of people and I mean a lot of people say to me before you know, is, is the right that the right way to do it? Um, I, to be honest, it, it works for me. It works really well for me. Um, if you find differently, it's up to you. But for me, uh, step files in this particular format, MATLAB does like to speak in step. So I don't tend to try and reinvent the wheel. I just go with what I've got. And so there's my there's my horn, and this is my main body. Uh, really, in ideal, I'd really like to look to export the uh, head sprocket, the interface piece. In this case, I'm going to assume it to, to rotate. And I know a lot will be kind of sitting there going, oh, well, should you let it, should you assume? In this case, yes, I'm going to, I don't care. So um, this is just to give you an idea of how you can control these things like this in this type of bizarre in environment. So I'm going to hit save on there as well. So now what I've actually got is, let me close this and close this, I've actually got this in step format. Now I'm going to minimize that because that's now me done. Uh, what I'd like to do first is I would like to set up my um, environment. So what I will do is I'm just going to go to, in fact let's go to a uh, home and go to new and simulate model. I'm going to do a blank model. Again, all I'm doing now is building the servo. Right, from here. Um, some, I'm going to do a little bit of both in this because some of you who have been in my classroom, you will know some of this. Some of you who have not will be new to this. So I will go steady away with this. Open blank space. Doesn't look too much, but don't let this deceive you. This is phenomenal. This is extremely good stuff. 
so um, what I'll do first is I'll go to library browser and within my library browser I'm going to go to Simscape and again for this I'm using multibody first things first I need to set up an environment within my environment uh, there's a few things I need I need uh, a solver configuration and again anybody who's sat in my classroom you will, you will well know all this because you've, you've had to listen to this again and again and again same process time and time again of this is what we do um, I come back and I'll go to utilities on my multibody and go on me um, mechanism configuration and then finally um, I'll go to my frames and transforms and bring in a world frame this is allows me to set up my datum my world my centerpiece so first things first spin that round and then spin that round this is me just lining up the components so they all sit roughly in the right spot like that a uh, great bit of kit so I'm just bringing this in I'm really anal with um, lining these things up I like them to be right Else I don't like them to be set up at all. Now, what's quite nice is I've left the server open. Let's consider this. Uh, again, anybody who's sat in my classroom, you'll know this. A uh, main body, horn, all the action happens here. So what we're actually going to do is focus that idea, and if I come back, I'm going to go, right, so... I'll show you where this is, but then I'm going to actually do it. I'm going to change a little bit now. So under body elements, I've got file solid. But what I'll do here is type file. <laughs> I'll type file solid. So this, I'll just call this main body. And let's just snap that in. So double click here and what I'd like to do now is bring in that body so I'm gonna navigate desktop uh, my servo and I'll go my servo itself this will bring the main body I press a 5 to update 3 2 1 Okay, let's try shut that down, turn it back on. Ah, right, there we go. So, that's the servo, and uh, we're gonna need a bit, well, I mean, we don't need a bit of inertia, but I'll just put it in there just to be complete. I'll go, I don't know, 7700, based on the uh, common, uh, very common job with uh, some of the students. I thought, yep, 7700, everything's 7700. Um, giving it a, a mass of 0.2 kilos. It's probably, <laughs> ironically, it's probably about right. Um, so I'll click OK and apply, and then, um, and then OK on there. So that's now got it in position. Oh, before I forget, uh, what this needs to know is, is its origins. And based on the way that this was drawn, if I remember rightly, the origins aren't the best which a lot of my students wouldn't be surprised with that so if you look here and what I've actually got is my toggle to frame view oh well, that's awkward look at that um, I actually drew this right well I didn't draw this actually I, I, I took this from the company basically they've come from the top and actually produced it there normally if that's not there you've got to fiddle and make that right but again this is not really about the modeling side on this this is about getting this reading from real data so I'll click OK on there and I'm actually going to use that R for anybody who's used to me I'm going to use that R so now what I want to do is add a revolute joint so I'm going to tab REV for revolute joint the revolute joint is uh, purely because we know that this servo will rotate around its axes Everything in the MATLAB system will default itself to Z, and when we check that axis, then everything was in Z. So finally, all I want to do is add the horn. So I'm just going to change this. Oh no, I didn't want to do it. Let's try this again. Tap 
horn. So just to serve a horn. So uh, just to serve a horn. And I'm going to flip that around. Uh, again, just going to redirect that. Again, I, I move relatively quick here. This is dead straightforward stuff, so I didn't don't want to insult anyone's intelligence. What you should find is that the server horn sits relatively where the actual piece will go. So let's click OK, apply, because I've only just reminded myself of that I've done this from the start. Update for geometry, and that puts it at 0 0.01 kilos. A little bit heavy for the servo horn, but we're not fussed. So let me just hit save on there, and I'll put that on the desktop. And I'll go, uh, let's call this servo, uh, live servo. Sounds cool, live servo. Servo, and then save. Wait for it, and then run. And as we know with the way that all these systems work, oh, that is, oh my good God, that is awful. That is not perfect at all, so that needs lifting. Um, I'll probably lift it, use a rigid transform and shift that by at least 5 millimeters. It appears that the surface itself is a bit damaged. But again, I'm not too fussed in this case, so I'll just go, all right, uh, let's go rigid transform, bring in a rigid transform. And because everything is sitting on Z in this, in this key component behavior, what I'll do is go standard axis, push it into that Z. And I'm going to go by millimeters, and then I will go five. I think five's a bit much, but it's just me. Um, just yeah, yeah. It's definitely too much. So it's more like two. Looking at that, so let's just shift that back. Move it back across to here. And let's bring it down to let's go two point five. And then update that, and that's fine. Uh, the the surface on this is obviously damaged, but I'm not bothered because all I want to do with this is this is about the server working. So next thing we need to do is um, we need to now drive this. Now I'm going to go zero to 180. So what I'm going to do is go to actuation, provide a torque. This is where it gets well automatically compute the torque and provide an input. So it gets quite good because now this is implying that we can actually figure out a torque on this based on its stress that it's going under. But if we have a, a microcontroller that we're using to drive this, this is even more cool. So let's go from um, a simulated power strain conversion. Spin that round. And snap that onto there like that. Um, in here, this is now going to be in degrees. And I'm going to make this a second order derivative. Which, again, for anybody who's used to this, you will know that that means that it's the way a, 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 a motor system is going to function. Because we get position, velocity, acceleration, then this will present torque from uh, all the key mechanics that's passing through it. Then finally, I'm going to add a signal builder. Now I always, I mean really, all this needs to do now is present me with a 10 seconds. So we'll stay with 10 seconds. I think 10 seconds is a good show. I'm going to make, I'm going to set this one to zero, this one I'm going to set to uh, 180, this one to 180, and this one to 10. So if I close this now and run it, what we should get is motion across, 180, stop, hold, return, 
180. Okay. So, um, anybody who's used to using Sim Multibody, you will know that's it. That is everything there. However, what if you're now in a position of thinking, well, that's not it. I want more. <laughs> um, you can easily get to this. Easily get to this. And you end up trying to think of a million and one ways to actually solve a better, better function for this. So that's what we're going to do. We're actually going to look at now replacing this. And just so you guys are aware, if anybody who's not used to this, uh, servos, let's go. Let's just bring an actuator torque. Bit of fun. So let's just bring it to there. Push it to there. Like that. And then what I'll do here is I will go power to simulant conversion, which goes from the um, matrix down to two dimension. And then uh, let's bring it around. I'll take you up. And just take it to there. And I'll go with the scope. So if I run it again, now what I can do is I can now even look at torques that are emerging on this system. Um, let's see, it's probably not much. 10 to the minus 4. It isn't much. Um, what else could we do? Just look at position. Run it again. There we go. And that's what you'd expect. So, we've now got a little bit of something going on here. But now, again, I want to be able to build my digital twin. So I, what I want to do now is combine Arduino. So I'm just going to go up to my Arduino uh, encoder. And what I've done, uh, what I thought might be nice and easy is to use uh, the sweep example. But what I've done on my sweep is I've converted it a little bit. Normally when it comes in, it will read from pin 9, uh, which is on an Arduino, if anybody's unsure. What I've done in this case, though, is I need to be able to, I need to, be able to get the system to print out where it is. So um, the value of POS, which has been passed through to the servo to push it into position, I'm going to use that value to actually register this as like a, like a printout, if you will. What this allows me to do is to use that value and push it into MATLAB to act as a driver. So it's the same type of thing, but I'm just taking the same value and pushing it somewhere else as well. So what it does is it runs in, and I've set my board rate to 9600. That is vital for the next few moments. That runs in and sets to, uh, starts at 0, then pushes to 180, just with a plus 2 equals of 1. So we just keep pushing until it gets to the positive of a 180 and then reverse the process. However, in the first for loop, it sets the position, then prints the position, then does a new line, waits and runs again. And then the loops repeat on the same side. Uh, what I would say is this is from the example which I've just modified. So there's nothing super sophisticated here. I thought to keep it simple as possible, maybe even better. So what I'll do is I'll just plug in my Arduino. Um, just to make sure this runs, I'm going to run and verify. Uh, as you can see on the bottom right, I'm running on COM4. Uh, again, if you've never done this, under my tools, in my ports, it sets me to COM4. Well, I've set it to COM4, but I'm just going to upload. Before I do anything, I just want to make sure it's going to be giving me something useful. So I can either go to the serial monitor or plotter. Start with the monitor. So the monitor confirms that it goes up and it goes down. Uh, the signal output looks like this. Wait for it. It's because I've been missing. There you go. Okay, so this is great. Um, what I'm going to do for the moment is just unplug my Arduino because my Arduino is now ready. 
and uh, I'm going to hit save on this just to make sure this isn't going to go uh, incredibly wrong which uh, this these things can often go incredibly wrong <laughs> um, what we actually do need is uh, let me just find it <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Right, so um, one thing I forgot is, and this is just me just reminding myself, what you're going to be looking to install, this is part of MATLAB's system, is the Simulink desktop real-time kernel system. This is a bolt-on to MATLAB. Um, before you do that, what you're going to have to write is SLD RTK E R N E L. This is the uh, the solid real time system, and you're looking to set it up. Um, what this will allow you to do is to allow you to uh, read a key particular rates and read outwards as well. So again, before you attempt any of this, make sure you install the Simulink real time uh, kernel. So I'll, I'll show you how this looks on the website. Uh, which is this? Is it this one? Ah, not that one. Not that one. So install the real, real time kernel. Ah, that's one way of, yeah, this is another way of, there is a URL um, bolt on for it. So let me try over this way. So I've just gone to the add ins built into MATLAB. Let's try tapping it there. This, this is the one. So this one. Make sure you get this installed and this will uh, help you in that key process to do what we're about to do. So um, let's go steady away in this key process. If you've gone through the process and now you've installed and everything's all in, I, I'm presuming everything is all installed right now. What I'm going to do first is go to new and simulate model. This model we're going to build now will be purely based on um, the system driving it. This isn't from Sim Multibody. This is Simulink that we're now using. What I'm going to do is see if my stream. So if this has worked, what you will get now is the Simulink desktop real-time toolbox that emerges. Uh, to make life easier for you guys who've never seen this, let's just navigate to it. Uh, where are we? So it's a Simulink. Uh, I for, I, I've forgotten myself where this sits now. Ah, there we go. Simulink real time. And what we're looking for is. It's stream input. Why can I not find that? Yeah, I'm having no luck at all in finding that. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm just going to type this because it's going to drive me insane otherwise. So I'm just going to type it in. I, I can't find that. So what I'm actually wanting to type in now is stream input. So under my stream input, this is what I've now got. And it doesn't look much. Hell, really, it's not much. But what I'm going to do is just double click in. Now what it actually wants to know, now what it actually wants to know is sample rate of time. I often sample an awful lot of time. So I'll call 0 0.003. And um, the maximum missed Ticks. Now, I've never had much luck with this. I, I, I didn't really know what this was. So what I ended up doing is finding an example online and they'd recommended 50 missed ticks, which, <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, what I'm going to do as well is it wants to know where my board is going to be reading from. I'm going to read from board four, uh, serial port four. This is based on the MATLAB uh, import. Um, this is based on the Arduino. A serial port if you remember earlier 
And now, the way that the string is held down, well, the way that the block data is handled, what I actually want to do here is I'm going to multiply my doubles and also my units by eight. So what I'll do is first just change this out completely. So I'm going to do uh, curly brackets. And I'm going to go four multiplied by double. Bring it up to there. Comma eight multiplied by unit. Unit eight. And then I'm going to bring this down to here. If I get this right, God's sake, I hope we get this right. I've spent hours trying to work this out before, you know. Hours. Um, when it comes to here now, uh, I've written these down, so I'm going to copy and paste this in. This is cheating, I know. So, this is uh, uh, for the format string, it is percentage F, percentage F, percentage F by percentage F by percentage D, and um, it is just the way that it's been handled. When I first read it, I, I'd lost my mind trying to figure this out. And with my terminators in this case, I want it just to be imported in numerical functions as so. Uh, the next thing I want to do is set up my board. Set up my board. Now um, I can choose. Now the functions I'm going to take you through here is the functions that I've often used. Sorry, one button. Wrong, wrong button, sorry. The functions that I often use here are the actual functions I've got. So, comp up for board rate 9600, 8 bits, priority of none, and 1. Now, what I'll do is just plug in my board, plug in my Arduino even. So, I'll plug in my Arduino, and I can now just hit test. Uh, confirms that it's fully verified and now this signal is being read I don't know if you can hear but let me see if I can show you this on the video see here servos now being driven 180 degrees and what I'm essentially wanting to do is tap into that signal as well and use it to control my um, digital representation click OK on there oh I don't know Oh, okay. Did I do it wrong there? Um, so let me try that again. Ah, right. So just looking, you see where I've got that little uh, apostrophe there? Missed it. That was my fault. Um, let me see if I can. Can I make that bigger? No, I can't. Uh, I'll just pause on that and do take a look at that. If anybody needs that, do drop me a line. I'll, I'll email it to you. If I click OK, now what we've got is gold. That's what we've got. It uh, doesn't look much at all. Let's go scope. And in this case, I'm going to bring in two. So let's go uh, function of two with two separates. So let's run it. And if this has worked, we should now find that our first signal that's been read in is purely on one. It likes to be read in two. I, I've, I've never been too sure about the second port, but that is our zero to 180, back to zero to 180. This is because it was in mid cycle and then it reset it. So every time it runs, it will reset to what its original thing was. So it's like it's hitting a reset button every time it functions. So this is cool. We are now in. We're now cooking with gas. So what I'll do is I'm just going to clear my outputs. 
now what we'll do is I'll take this and I'll just copy it for the moment take it across to my actual uh, servo right click paste and now what I'll do is I'll pull that out comment that out remove that hell remove that as well actually this now becomes that this is where it gets so freaking cool it's insane okay so let's let's get I almost want a drum roll <laughs> so let's just uh, zoom that in bring this across right so uh, let me see if we can get all this over here because I'm that excited alright so I almost want to tilt it just so you can see I'm not lying and hopefully this works oh denied what we're at here let's have a look uh, outputs with its own dimension of 40 oh <sighs> okay okay right so uh, let's bring this back I'll show you what's happened uh, I forgot that was really all good I was so confident <laughs> okay let's bring it back I'll show you what's happened I uh, see here what it's actually got is four different pieces of signals coming out so which is fine uh, a little bit annoying I get that so let's do a demu uh, so if I do demu pull that out of there because we know we don't want that now and um, I'm going to turn it to four and I'm going to push you to here and pull it to there snap me onto there this one and then I'm going to run so let's just check that right so there we go back in again this is just where it's hit the reset and it's got itself blowing confused so let's try bringing this on so I'm going to copy this and let's bring it across to here and I'll paste it in I mean really I didn't have to do that I could have just put in a new demu but you just get the idea so I've been this to here and push up to there snap you to here like that and push that into there so we've now got a single port coming out the other four are dead at the moment um, if you do get a chance, I'd recommend that you take a look why that's happened. Um, just for your own experience. Okay, let's bring this back again. Let's see if this works. I'm feeling more confident now. Okay. Oh, let me just... Again, servos in. Uh, just want to make sure you can get a good image of that. So there we go. And then let's try now. nice so now that was um, a full test so that was a true example of an overlap between the two and now what we should have had then in fact not what we should have had what we did have then was a live system being fed straight into this using the Simulink system um, phenomenal bit of kit love it so if I come back here what it does now is it gives me what it thinks was the actual servo. Now this has come because it's, it, again, I should really come up with a better way to drive, at least to, to read the servos, but that's where this has come from. It's come from there, and if I was to chop that off, that would be better, but um, it's no good. So what I'll just do is I'll just zoom um, this area here, and then I'm going to snap uh, this area to here, and check it out.
there's my signal and this is based on the uh, unit around the actual joint and that's what it thinks uh, the position is and how it's been moving which is phenomenal so again I could do all sorts now I could drive in not just a single signal a simple signal like this I could do so much more so um, I hope that if you have a chance to go through this, hope you found it a benefit. And yeah, I have promised this for years. And yes, one of you guys uh, messaged me recently and I just, I, I thought, you know what? It's about time I actually did it because I've been asked about to do it forever. Um, if there is anything, do give me a shout. I'm more than happy to help. Um, but other than that, have a good one. I'll speak to you all soon. Cheers, guys.